The last part here that I'll go over is delivering, is delivering an image. I am on a PC right now. If you're on a Mac, one of the best formats to export out to is ProRes. I really highly recommend using this on a, on a Mac for at least for the export portion. If you're editing on a PC, cool. If you get a chance to do it on a Mac, I think ProRes is one of the best quality um, codecs to export to. They have ProRes LT, ProRes Proxy, regular ProRes, ProRes 422, ProRes uh, 444. They got a whole bunch of different types of uh, formats to encode to. Here you can do QuickTime on a PC, but you're going to be stuck with H.264 uh, and MPEG-4 compression. You might want to go to, if you're going like ultra high quality, I, I would still recommend uh, uh, QuickTime on a PC and use like an MPEG-4 or H.264 compression. You do the best, you can actually set your data rate here. Uh, data rate, pretty standard. If this is, since this is red footage and I want to maintain the quality, it really depends on what I'm going to. If I'm going to, if I'm going to YouTube, 50,000 kilobits per second will be, will suffice. That will be plenty for for YouTube for YouTube setting. Unless you're doing 4K, you might want to up the resolution. I might want to up up the uh, data rate on that a little bit. There are some options. You have some resolution options here as well. Now, one thing I want to point out is this project. We're editing this project at 1920 by 1080. So before we get into the delivering here, I just want to show how to conform everything to one aspect ratio and one resolution. Say this is going to be showing in the movie theater. You got to know what format you're going to here. I'm going to save my project. I'm going to go up to File, go to Project Manager. I'm going to right click on this now and go to Config on my project. I'm going to go to Config. I'm going to change the resolution here. Let's say I'm showing this in, let's, sure, why not? Let's go to something, let's go to the big theater setting here. I'm going to go to, scroll down to a 2K. We're going to a big movie theater. We're going to do a 2K movie theater and we're going to do 2.39 2 to 1, which is a very wide aspect ratio. So let's get kind of extreme here. This is the widest that movie theaters usually show in is 239. Uh, 185 is a standard. This is the beginning aspect ratio for cinema. This is kind of the ending aspect ratio, the widest it gets. And uh, below this you'll have 16 by 9 or 1.77 to 1. So 1.77 or 1.78, 1.78 to 1, 1.85 to, to 1, 2.39 to 1. And as these numbers get higher, your, your aspect ratio gets wider. So I'm going to select this one. We've got a timeline rate already set. You can't change that now. I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to open this project now. And notice a couple things, uh, something that has changed here. I'm, let me scroll out here a little bit and show you. You see this gray area up here and this black area in here. This is now part of my image right here. See, this is a wider screen for a big movie format. And red footage would look great on a wide screen, on a big wide screen. So I'm going to go to the beginning here. And I'm going to change my aspect ratio. You do have to do this kind of clip by clip. You have to adjust every clip. This is called pan and scan. This is something that Colorist does. And this is under the sizing tab over here. You click on your sizing tab. And then you're going to zoom every image to the aspect ratio that you want. So I'm going to go under here, hit zoom, and this one I believe I'm going to have to go to 1.4 to zoom that up. Uh, let me, let me, it's, actually it's 1. Point, let me find this out here to get that in the, to fit in there. Yeah, about 1. Point, about 1. 1.4. About I'm going to go 1.34 to be to be careful here. And notice it has zoomed it up to fit in the movie screen there. But now I'm going to tilt here to get her head back into the shot there. This was not shot for 1.89 so that's why this is a little bit too cropped here. But now as you go from shot to shot, and you can animate that by the way because right here it changes. It starts there and then there's a little too much headroom. Not too bad. Then we go to this next shot and double click in here 1.35. Zooms that up enough and then I have to tilt. This is what a colorist does. Is gets a, a colorist is not just somebody who does color correction, but it's somebody who finishes, who finishes your movie. So this is part of finishing. Go to zoom, 1.35, and so on. And like I said, this wasn't shot for that, so these images are a little too zoomed up, they're a little too cropped, but still, this this is looking pretty good. 1.35, and you'll keep doing this until you get everything. You'll pan and tilt until you get everything positioned properly. And then now look at this. We have a 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio ready for cinema, ready for the big screen. So uh, so now your next part is the actual, after we get finished doing this, the next portion will be to deliver. So now I'm going to go to deliver. Now that we know, I didn't do everything here, so let's go back and pretend like it, my movie's all done. Look at this nice wide as cinema aspect ratio. And we're going to export this out. I'm going to go under, look, it has already set my resolution for the standard that my timeline is set. I'm going to go QuickTime. MP4 compression quality and the version that I'm going to show you after this is actually one that was color corrected by somebody else and it was finished by somebody else so I think the aspect ratio is 
in reality like about 16 by 9 or 1.85 I can't remember but I'm going to show this movie at the end uh, and you can watch it and enjoy whatever so I'm going to go quick time I'm going to do H.264 MPEG for us another good compression I'm going to restrict this to 50 megabits for 50,000 kilobits per second for YouTube uh, keyframes going to automate the keyframes is high enough quality I don't have to worry about keyframes necessarily I've got my resolution set and my frame rate and now I'm going to add this to my render queue I'm going to tell it where I wanted to save it I'm just going to go to my videos on my computer here, which is fine. Now I can select this right here and hit Start Render. And now this will render my video to my computer, and I ha I'll have a nice finished product for everybody to look at. So uh, if you have any questions, post comments or in questions. And uh, thanks for watching this. I will have some upcoming tutorials on DaVinci Resolve as well. I will be doing a future episode on really how to prep a project if you have special effects and other things, which is very, very typical for most projects, and how you get that project from something like Premiere or a nonlinear editor to Resolve without um, major issues. So. And one other form of delivery here uh, is to export out a project if you're switching computers. If you're sending a project to somebody else, you can go up to File, Export Project, and this will export out what's called a DaVinci Resolve project, which is a very small file. You're going to hit that and save, and then when you open up a new computer, if you're on a new computer, you give that project file to somebody. Uh, you go to the Project Manager splash screen here at the beginning. You can right-click and say Import, and you can import a DaVinci Resolve project into your into, onto your computer. But then, of course, the, keep in mind that project file does not contain any media at all it just references the media so as long as that person has the media on their computer or on a hard drive hooked to the computer they can of course go through the entire process where they import that project go into that project go into the media pool add that media um, back into the pool and reconnect the footage and the way you re will reconnect the footage is by going to your edit page you'll basically highlight all these clips right click and you will tell it to find the media in the media pool that you've then added same process that you did before so it's a little bit of a process but that's how you move project from computer to computer don't forget that I've posted under the description here I have posted the uh, some of the major shortcuts that I've been using here there are a ton more shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve you can look up lists online but these are the major ones that I've been using here so if you need to use these short shortcuts remember to replace control if I've got control and alt on a PC it's going to be typically command and option on a Mac so control alt will be command option and of course where I have option that's a Mac so these are kind of mixed shortcuts but just so you're aware of that and command equals control on a PC. Enjoy!